clearly as as tr used truck sales go, our sales go as well. But um, so we've been we've been subject to all, all those those tailwinds and headwinds as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, been, been very strong. Twenty one was a great year for us, and twenty two has been been pretty strong as well. That was the voice of Wade Bontrager, CEO of National Truck Protection, the now four-decade provider of used truck warranties to owner-operators and small fleet owners. Bontrager there was speaking to the wild headwinds and some tailwinds the used truck market itself has experienced over the last couple of years, and how the NTP business, also owner of the well-known Premium 2000 brand of used equipment warranties, experiences those same pressures. I'm Todd Dills, your host for this edition of the Overdrive Radio Podcast for September 16th, 2022. And we're going to dig into some of the themes unearthed by Overdrive's own news editor, Matt Cole, in a three-part feature about the evolution of the used truck warranty market. That series wrapped up yesterday with part three at overdriveonline.com. Navigate to the equipment section to find that story, datelined September 15th. We're going to hear a lot more from Wade Bontrager, too, as his arrival at National Truck Protection in 2018 ushered in a variety of changes in the company's product offerings that have, I think it's safe to say, improved owner-operators' experience of their used truck warranties. The changes responded to criticism that were pretty common among the owner-operator community when it comes to used warranties. Here's Michigan-based small fleet owner Bud Davenport summing up the very bedrock of some of those points of view. The warranty companies that I had heard about through uh, colleagues of mine right. uh, said they cover, sorry, they don't cover anything. Uh, so he's like, it might be a waste of money to get it. And yeah, Davenport, owner of Davenport Independent Contracting Services, leased a 2016 Freightliner and it just so happened that it came with the national truck protection warranty so it didn't it wasn't it was included in the, in, the, in the price of the truck so they did so good with that truck that every truck that i bought after that i made sure that the national truck protection warranty was on it since the lease of that cascadia as noted owner operator davenport's been a regular customer of ntps with a bevy of purchased trucks and i uh, currently run a 2020 I got a 2020 Peterbilt uh, 579 Epic, 2018 Ken, uh, Kenworth uh, T680, 2017 Kenworth uh, T680 uh, as well. The evolution of the used truck warranty market has been generally toward better service, toward more complete coverage of so-called progressive damages, and, as we're here in this podcast, easier to understand transparent contracts. Given the high cost of labor and parts in today's world, not to mention the high cost of used equipment as well, such warranties have taken on new value for used buyers in other ways too. On the other side of a break for a word from Overdrive Radio's sponsor, we'll pick up with Overdrive News Editor Matt Cole describing the goals of his three-part used truck warranty feature investigation. So stay tuned. What's more powerful than a horde of Vikings? Your engine when it's treated with the best diesel additive available. Howe's Diesel Defender with IDX4 detergent is your warrior against low lubricity and harmful deposits. With Viking-like strength, it boosts your fuel economy and protects your engine like no other. Don't settle for the weak guy. Let Howe's Diesel Defender go to battle for you at every fill-up, and your engine will always be the champion, guaranteed. Explore even more at howesproducts.com. You can visit them at Howes, H-O-W-E-S, HowesProducts.com. Okay, here's part of my conversation with Matt Cole setting things up. Along the way, you'll hear more of our talk between the voices of Wade Bontrager and small fleet owner Bud Davenport as well. Here's Cole. Just trying to get a feel for, um, you know, what the used truck warranty market is today, um, especially in, in light of um you know really high used truck prices and and parts uh you know replacement parts and, and labor costs skyrocketing the last couple of years um just trying to get a feel for for the pulse of that industry right in the in the utility i guess for for uh, owner operators uh, that would use it i guess yeah absolutely i was i was kind of struck by the extent to which uh all the warranty providers that we talked to were 
pretty well aware of the uh, of the kind of old negative uh, opinions of, of a lot of the of their businesses um, and also I mean just everything that they've been doing to try to combat that and to try to address some of the very valid concerns that, that folks have yeah for sure um, you know I think it's something that uh, you know those companies have probably been aware of for years and um, you know it's, it's something that they seem to be uh, to, to be working on to try to try to make it a better value for for the end user ultimately the owner operator small truck small fleet owner you spoke to wade bontrager um they were np excuse me ntp <laughs> uh, national truck protection and uh which also uh, is, owns the premium 2000 brand and he kind of he kind of laid out a, a very kind of systematic uh series of steps that the company put in place just over the past few years i think that that really responded to a lot of the you know a lot of the complaints they they heard from from folks and the perceptions that were out there right yeah for sure um he came into ntp in 2018 um when uh when ntp bought premium 2000 and kind of combined the two biggest uh aftermarket warranty players in the game and um you know his goal from from that point on was to kind of uh, you know, fix the issues that, that truck owners have had. And, and I think the biggest thing there um, that, that he talks about is, um, you know, more transparency in those contracts, uh, making it clear to the owner what is covered, what's not covered, um, particularly when it comes to down, downstream parts. Um, you know, if, if part A breaks and part B breaks as a result of that, is part B covered? And, um, you know, that's something that a lot of owners have had problems with in the past. And that's something that um, NTP and Premium 2000 in, partic in particular have tried to address. To wit, here's NTP CEO Wade Bontrager in conversation with Matt Cole, telling the story of his own company's recent history evolution. Sure, sure. So we've got a long history. NTP, we're really kind of the combination of two companies, NTP and, and Premium 2000. I'll talk about both of those. But NTP was started almost 40 years ago up in New Jersey. So you know, by far the the oldest and, and you know the original aftermarket vehicle service contract company in, in, in the commercial trucking space. Um, started in New Jersey, sort of grew up out of a out of a uh, diesel repair shop and grew from there. Um, NTP was acquired by a private equity firm you know, in the early 2000s. And then um, our current owner is a group called um, Kinderhook Industries, bought NTP in 2016. And they, they, you know, their whole business model is buying great companies and, and tr transforming them into even greater companies. Mm -hmm. They bought NTP, immediately sort of set their sights on um, acquiring Premium 2000, who at the time was the, the, the biggest um, provider in the space. NTP was, they were kind of one and two, and it kind of went back and forth. But yeah. um, to close the transaction, to, to add Premium 2000 to the portfolio in January of 2018, and they brought me on board at that point to put them together. Right. And, and um, my background really is more insurance. I've been an, an insurance guy for um, more than a couple of decades now. But, okay. um, and, you know, we are warranties, which will te technically in our space are called vehicle service contracts, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll call them warranties because that's what everybody calls them. Right. Um, they are in, in the U.S. Warranties for commercial vehicles are not really insurance, but they're treated very much like insurance mm -hmm. and the companies run like insurance. Right. So. The whole goal here was to take two companies that were good at what they did and, and turn them into one great company. And that's kind of been w w what we've been doing and, and sort of what my my challenge was when I got here. You know, we had a, a across the two companies, we had a, a real portfolio of different kinds of products in, in the warranty space. Both companies had done a, a nice job of servicing customers, you know, building a, a good business. But it both companies also had a lot of room to improve, both in terms of the product that was was out there. And, and the service that delivered that product. What I saw, you know, my, I spent the first five or six months of my time at the company really trying to understand what is the industry perspective of my companies or my brands. They're both, you know, they're we're one company, two brands now. And and in what what is the industry perspective of this industry or you know the vehicle service contract space in general? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't particularly favorable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I heard a lot of people tell me, well, we don't really like you guys because you, know, you you don't pay claims. And when you do pay claims, it takes too long to 
to, to get them done. So we just throw up our hands and pay for our own repair and get on the road. And I'm not, you know, so I heard that. I looked at my PL statement and said, well, we're paying a lot of claims. I see tens of millions of dollars of claims being paid. So why did that, why did that perception exist? So, you know, most of my, my first six months, 12 months was really trying to understand that. What are the root causes of those, those perceptions? And then putting a plan together to address those. You know, what I saw the problems were with the old product was they didn't necessarily cover everything that broke. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that was intentional. Sometimes that was unintentional. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the language in the contract was vague so that you weren't really sure whether you had coverage or not. And companies would typically err on the side of the company if it were vague. Um, and, and I thought that was terrible, right? So we decided to do a couple of things. One, let's actually build products that cover the things that break. Let's have contracts that are very transparent that show you what is covered and what's not covered because they're not bumper to bumper warranties. Um, and 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 let's let, let's price those things according to to the risk of those. Um, so and then we got into the whole service world, which I'll get into in a minute. But product wise, what we did then was rolled out. Really, there's two core um, programs, sort of sort of our um, in the premium 2000. It's a program called Elite, which we sell probably the most of. And at NTP, it's called Preferred. Our more upscale program, and I'll describe the differences in a minute. Um, at, at Premium 2000, it, it, it's called Supreme, and at NTP, it's called Ultra 2. Um, they're they're fairly similar in the components they cover, but there are some differences in um, how that coverage may be applied. And this really gets into when, when I when I looked at why why were people unhappy with the, with the with the warranty industry and, and I specifically. I saw a couple of things. Um, everybody thinks about these these warranties as what components do you cover? And clearly that's one dimension that you should understand. What items are listed as being covered and which items are not being covered. And I really think about this product as, as being three dimensional. It's what components are being covered. And then very importantly, sort of across this bottom grid are a set of conditions that are applied to that coverage. For instance, um, do you get progressive damage? But if part A fails and takes out part B, do I have coverage for part A and part B or just part A? What if, if there are limits of liability, what limits of liability apply? So you really need to understand how progressive damage is applied. You need to understand, are there limits of liability or no limits of liability? You need to understand how the company treats um, or, or, or uh, behaves with what might be a pre-existing condition. It's really easy to fall back on, well, you should have known about that, that's pre-existing. We, we, we've taken the approach of, you know, there's an inspection that has to be done or, or you know, uh, uh, the shop has to certify that the truck is re ready for the road. If they've done that, if the truck fails in the first 500 miles, we're still paying the claim, right? If, as long as the, the shop is doing what they're supposed to, because um, there are some things you just flat can't see, right. right? Now, if there's something that obviously should have been caught in an inspection or walk around, that, that may be a different issue. But um, our warranty started at mile one, and that's when you, your coverage should start. So, you know, that whole bottom the you know, second dimension of conditions, you really got to understand what the, the fine print in the contract is. And the third um, dimension I really view is, is, is tenure or term. Um, some of these, that seems straightforward, right? I bought a two-year warranty. Well, in some cases you didn't. Some of the old warranties, you buy a two-year warranty and you'd have two years of coverage for some stuff and some stuff would drop off after the first year, right? Turbos and injectors would drop off. So, you know, the customer bought it thinking I've got a two-year warranty. Turbo goes out 15 months into it. They don't have coverage for it, which is crap. I don't, I don't, that, that's, you know, the customer's not going to know that. So, you know, we killed all that stuff. So I, I always preach to people, if you don't buy my product, that's fine. Buy somebody's, but understand what's covered, what the conditions are, and what truly is the term, right? Those three dimensions. Um, so we kind of built everything with, with that framework in mind. And so on our, you know, our, our sort of middle of the road mainstream product, the the, the elite and, and preferred programs, um, we offer very very broad coverage. We we rolled out sort of a new suite of products back in 2020 that that had these these uh, these programs. We actually added about 42 components to the old programs we had that weren't covered before that are now covered. Yeah. Um, really broaden our definition of progressive damage. If you're buying coverage for components, um, you're going to have coverage. Um, it's not, oh no, you know, sorry, the, the turbo failed and took out something else. We're not covering the something else. That that's mm -hmm. we're not doing any of that. Um what elite and preferred do have is they do have limits of liability. So, you know, a thirty thousand dollar aggregate, twenty-two thousand five hundred on an engine, that sort of thing. Um, 
and in a, in a labor cap. And what that does is allows us to keep the price for those programs a, a bit more manageable. Mm-hmm. And some people love that. They're, they're happy with those limits and happy to take the, the you know, slightly lower price. Other folks are like, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want caps. And like, fine. We, that's when we pivot to um, Supreme and Ultra 2. That's Basically, true. the same covered things are covered. Slightly even broader um, progressive damage treatment, but um, no caps. The only mm-hmm. cap on, on the claim is the actual cash value of the truck, right? Just like an insurance, if, if your claim costs more than the truck, then it just gets totaled at that point. But So it's slightly higher price tag on, mm-hmm. on the Ultra 2 and Supreme. But we make those options available, and I'm happy with somebody choosing either one of those. Kind of the other, I guess, a bigger element that I get from from hearing uh, your conversation with uh, Mr. Bontrager was uh, was just kind of is going. I mean, they probably thought of themselves as having a customer centric approach um, uh, to begin with, but but it just really feels like uh, they put in a series of steps that were that were geared toward. Uh, they were specifically driven by customer uh, issues uh, that had been sort of reported directly to them. The first thing we did was I told my team, you know, we're going to we're going to do our best to have very crystal clear contracts. Mm-hmm. So a customer will know what's covered, what's not covered. If you end up in the situation where there is something vague in the contract, we're erring on the side of the customer. Mm-hmm. I told my, my, my claims team out of the gate, I said, I want you to imagine that your mama bought a, a truck mm-hmm. and she went out and she had your warranty and her truck broke down. And she called you with a claim. If you can't explain to mama why she doesn't have coverage, we're covering it, right? Mm-hmm. If it's vague, that's on us. It's our contract. Now we need to quickly fix the contract, but um, sure. going forward, we want to sure we want to clear those things up. We shouldn't have vagaries in the contract. That's you know, so step one was just really, really clarifying the contract and erring on the side of the, of the customer when 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 it was vague. Um, other, the second thing we did, you know, um, we, we we look at Google reviews a good bit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they stay around forever. And so when I got here, there were only a handful of reviews for NTP and a handful of reviews for Premium 2000, and they were all bad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, people just, like, you know, they're, they, they're going to tell you about the bad stuff that happened. Yeah. So we started asking customers uh, about 18 months ago, hey, we, we paid a claim for you. If you don't mind, here's a link if you, if you could leave a review for us to let people know what happened. Right. And, um, and they started doing it. And in the past 18 months, about you know, 85% of the reviews we've gotten have been four and five star reviews. You still get, and it's funny, there are no twos and threes. It's either they love you or they hate you. <laughs> and I, I, I learned this a long time ago in insurance. I, when I was a, a uh, fledgling product manager at an insurance company you know, in the 90s, uh, I was offered a job to go to another insurance company. Mm-hmm. And I told my CEO, I was, I was thinking about going. He goes, no, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. And I thought, oh, he loves me. He's trying to keep me. He said, no, uh, if you want to go, go. Just don't go to another insurance company. You'll hate being in insurance for the rest of your life because people don't like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. In general, people don't like insurance companies. Because right. either they're paying for something they're not using, and they feel like they're just wasting their money, or they really do have a problem and their life's just not not very good at that point. So right. you know, um, we're, we're not dealing with, with people who are in great situations. And, and so, you know, and I know, I know that. I've got thick skin. People are going to... Um, going to take issue with not getting every penny. The one thing we do, if we get a one-star review on Google, we always respond to that customer. Mm-hmm. And usually what we find out is a combination of a couple of things. Either they just flat didn't buy coverage for, they didn't buy trans and rear, right? They had a transmission yeah. problem. Well, you didn't buy the transmission coverage. They right. had the opportunity to buy it. Um, or their coverage has expired. Their contract's already expired. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they didn't pay it. Well, you didn't have a contract anymore. So it's usually things like that um, that, that we've, is the only reason we're, we're, we're getting these one-star reviews. But so we, we make a real conscious effort to um, to talk to our customers, to make sure we, we, we changed our, our servicing, our whole back-end operation. Um, we revamped it to run a lot more like an insurance company claims process uh, with, with good modern systems and modern portals. So we do a, during the, the, the life of a claim, we are communicating not just with the shop doing the repair, we're communicating regularly through our portals with the customer. So mm-hmm. we're telling them what's happening. We're telling them if we're waiting for pictures from the shop, we're telling them if, if we're waiting for a, another diag, um, they know what's going on rather than just being left in limbo because they just generally assume it's our fault if, if it's not happening. We we let them know what we've approved and what we've paid. So we're, we're constantly communicating with the customer so they know what's going on with the repair 
which avoids those big surprises. Um, the other thing we've done is we, we created a preferred repair partner network. We do, we do repairs with about 5,400 shops across U.S. and Canada. But we've got close to 500 shops that are in our preferred repair program. And if you're in our preferred repair program, preferred repair program, um, you've agreed to certain service standards for our customers, certain price points, discounts, those sort of things. The beauty of, of, of our pricing is let's say the customer has some warranty work being done, but there's other work that has to be done as well. That's not covered by the warranty. They get our pricing for that work as well in the PR. Okay. So we're, we're doing everything we can to help the customer. Look, my, my, my mission is I've told, told the team, our mission is to keep trucking businesses in business. That's what we're here for. We love our, our, our dealership partners. We love working with them, helping them, you know, grow and make money as well. But my customer is the end user is the truck driver. And our goal is to keep them on the road. We introduced programs, a couple of things we did. We introduced a program called rapid repair guarantee, um, which if your claim takes beyond a certain amount of time, will actually assist in your truck payment. We introduced a rental truck program. So if you need to get back on the road, we can help you get into a rental truck and cover the cost of that and get you back on the road. Yeah. Um, just a lot of things like that that we've added. They're not you know traditional coverage in a in a, a warranty. That's mm -hmm. all geared around keeping the truck the truck driver in business. That's our goal. Yeah, rental is an add on. The okay. rapid repairing rapid repair guarantee is is come standard. You also spoke to uh, Bud Davenport. Yeah, yeah, and he's a, he's a small fleet owner. Um, I mean, his experience it sounded like is is within the last couple of years with. Um, since since a lot of the changes that were put in place, uh, and he's generally uh, he's had had a very positive experience at this point, and kind of has basically has uh, has a used warranty on all the all four of the trucks that he's got five maybe at this point I think. Yeah, his story was pretty interesting. Um, he was he like many owner operators had heard the negativity about uh, extended warranties and. Um, had generally stayed away from him throughout his owner operator career. He's been a truck driver since the late eighties, but he's owned his own truck since, uh, 2007, I believe. Um, and, uh, he'd always heard that, you know, they were a waste of money. You, you know, they don't pay claims, all this kind of stuff. He leased a truck, uh, from a company that had a warranty on it when he leased it and, um, something happened to the truck and he was able to see firsthand uh that you know it, it did work out in his favor uh the name of my company is uh davenport independent contracting services uh we do drive in regular yeah just drive in general for all right y'all in all 48 states okay uh i'm a fleet owner in, in in a couple of different fleets uh i have a total of five trucks and uh all of them have uh all of them with the exceptional one had uh the ntp warranty uh, and I first got on to uh, MP, I mean, uh, National Truck Protection, uh, with a six month warranty I got on a, on a lease truck I got through OTR leasing. And I had some issues uh, with that truck's death system. And I took it to the shop. It was covered under the OT, I mean, under the, um, the NTP warranty. Mm -hmm. No problem. They did such a good job on it. I extended the, the warranty on that truck to two years okay and unfortunately that truck it didn't give me many issues but then i had some uh kenworths t680s mm -hmm. uh 2016s 2017s and i was catching all kind of issues with uh with those trucks and i was just gonna tell you man that uh national truck protection uh they just they saved me <laughs> Probably a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 I had one dev system went out on my truck. It was uh, they had to do the tanks, the dozer valves, the and and I mean they had to clean everything. It was, and I know NTP spent about fourteen thousand dollars on that repair. Oh yeah, that's that's the kind of money that will save your business. And then this year, this year on another Kenworth, uh, I had a turbo turbo manifold mm -hmm. uh that went out on the truck and it was of course at the at the dealership and uh, it turned out to be a thirteen thousand dollar job that uh, national truck protection covered yeah wow. so and they covered it hands down uh you know so i like i said i would say you know over the last i would say I, i've had i've been with them since 2020 since 2020 2019 somewhere around there mm -hmm. um 
I've, I've saved probably about $100,000 in repairs. And I know there's a, from the wider story that, that you did, there's, there is a lot of, um, there is a lot of thinking going into um, raising the, some of the mileage limitations that these, uh, on the trucks that these companies will cover, uh, given that uh, the, the OEM new truck market build rates have been so slow in the last couple of years and that people are going to be holding on to these longer um and as more used trucks come to the market they're they're going to be a higher mileage than usual um I, what I, from what i heard from uh wade bontrager at ntp it sounds like they're just they're just they'll be able to do that but it'll be priced in um yeah basically. As usual, it'll be more expensive you know more higher mileage but i mean what did you hear from some of the other companies out there very more. similar um you know they uh they understand that with with larger fleets having to hold on to their equipment longer that those trucks are going to be hitting the used truck uh truck lots with higher mileage than, right. than you typically see so um you know they know it's something that's um that they're gonna have to that they are preparing for and um you know you're seeing them instead of capping out at a million miles going up to a million and a half or two million maybe um right you know, it's 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 just kind of the nature of of the industry at this point. Yeah. So typically, it's it's um, ten model years and up to a million miles. Okay. We have, but we absolutely have programs. We've got programs that go back, you know, twenty plus years okay. for for certain customers, certain programs. And you know, we want to do some underwriting on that on that fleet to understand, uh, or you know, that business to see what it looks like. But mm-hmm. um, so we're, you know, the out of the box program is 10, 10 years, million miles, but we've got a lot of flexibility to do. To do other things, we the, the nice thing about where we are, you know, we, we've been around a long time. We're we're, we're big. We have more data than anybody because mm-hmm. we're by far the biggest out there. Um, it allows us to customize things for certain groups. For instance, we've done some programs with um, some truck equipment manufacturers that do boom trucks and bucket trucks and lift trucks. We're actually covering the back end of those things, right? Okay. Not 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 just the powertrain. Um, so we're covering the hydraulics and the cylinders and, and the electronics on the back end as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so. Don't assume if you have that kind of equipment that you can't get that kind of coverage um, right. th- that can be available as well. We wrote out a car hauler program about 18 months ago, probably 12 to 18 months ago okay. um, that covers the whole, you know, the, the back end of the, of the car hauler as well. Yeah. And with more miles and more age, uh, uh, a product like this is uh, simply a more expensive uh, endeavor, no matter how you look at it, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think, um, you know, Wade said this, but while it's, not insurance it's treated like insurance so um you know the higher the risk for the warranty companies the more you're gonna have to pay for it right small fleet owner bud davenport detailed some of the terms of his warranties and the covered items included with a special emphasis on those persnickety emission systems his trucks are all well within the basic 10 years and million miles limitations of their principal products that ntp's wade bontrager noted well they don't cover as much on death you know, as they did when I first got the policy, got uh-huh. the warranties, I think they went from, I think they had a 12000 12000 12, $12, max or, or $14,000 max. Mm-hmm. And then um, now it's, I think it's it's only up to eight. You know, but I mean, right. even even with that, it's just, yeah, you can't beat it. I mean, and it's, unfortunately, that's the only issues, you know, we're having with these trucks nowadays is the depth systems. Sure. The engines, you know, they run forever. But like I said, I had that one turbo. That's the only non death issues I've had uh, since I've been operating. And, and like I said, NTP stepped up and they covered it. Davenport's changed calculus when it comes to warranting his used equipment. He ties directly to. What else? The high cost of repairs. Along the way, Davenport offered up recommendations for assessing what's available when considering a used warranty. You know, when I started driving, you know, uh, labor was $50 an hour. Mm-hmm. And now we're up to, you know, 200 bucks, $220 an hour. Uh, and it's just the sophisticated equipment, you know, that we're operating. We, you know, with so many sensors and, um, you know these tech shops. You know, I mean, they they're, they're charging us. I mean, it's it's four or five hundred dollars just to go in and find out what's wrong with your truck. 
So, yeah, it, it's definitely worth getting if you're buying used, yeah. uh, used equipment, you know. And, uh, yeah, so I would definitely recommend it. Like I said, NTP is my, is the first warranty company that I've, that I've ever dealt with. Uh, I would say that they need to uh, speak to other owner ops. Uh, I hear to see, you know, do some research online. We live in the age of information, you know, do some research online uh, on on different companies, much like what, you know, what you guys are doing and try to read these articles. Um, you know, you can find a lot of stuff on YouTube uh, and in terms of, you know, researching after warranty, uh, aftermarket warranty companies. Mm-hmm. And once you, uh, once you do it, you have to be thorough in the packages that you choose, uh, for your truck. You know, uh, you don't try to be cheap in terms of, uh, you know, I only want to get, I can only afford this much, but then you're leaving out critical components and you're leaving out, you know, well, that shouldn't break, but you know, there's these critical things, the rear end, your transmission, um, your, uh, and when you say critical components, you're talking about your turbos and your mm-hmm. water pumps, you know, these type of things that, that, that may or may not go. But it just gives you that that peace of mind on the road that, um, you know, that you'll be covered, you mm-hmm. know, opposed to it, having this shell out, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in repairs. Because if you try to cover it out of pocket, these trucks will break you. You know, these trucks will break you, you know, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity uh, through OTR to having, you know, to have that experience uh, with dealing with uh, NTP because I, I probably would have never considered it it's because I was, you know, I was just look at it like, you know, I tell all my friends when they say they want to buy a truck, I say, well, people are coming to get you because they think you have money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you buy a truck is immediately they're coming to get you with tires, insurance, maintenance, everything, right? So when I, if I would have heard of NTP without having to actually experience it, without a, you know having a, a, a upfront cost to me, I probably would have declined because it was just somebody else out to get me. Right. <laughs> and so, but because they they were, I mean, and down to the letter. I mean, if it's if it's in your warranty, they cover it. They cover it. If it's in your warranty, you know, they don't look for a reason not to cover it. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked. I was, I was shocked and, you know, shocked to a point where every truck and I'm talking, you know, I bought four trucks since every truck was covered under their warranty. NTP's Wade Bontrager too offered these recommendations on questions to ask and all the fine print to consider when evaluating a warranty contract. Look at the components being covered. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's, you can compare those across different companies and make sure you're getting the broadest possible coverage for the things that actually break. Um, you know, I, just there are examples of in, in old contracts of things where you know a certain manufacturer's fuel pump was problematic, so the company wrote those fuel pumps out of the contract. Mm-hmm. But people didn't see that, right? They bought the warranty. They go, oh, I've got fuel pump, except for you have this one, you don't get coverage on it. So check those things. Make sure there's yeah. no hidden language around that. Check those conditions I talked about. Make sure that progressive damage really does apply. Um, there are, you know, in some contracts I've seen, there's pretty squirrely language around, you know, if you don't get pictures to us within or you know, X number of days, your 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 claim's not valid, right? You're mm-hmm. not. That's look for that kind of stuff. Look look for things that look like a company's loophole to give to give them a reason to say no to the claim because that happens. Um, I think the industry is getting better. It, it, not not just us. I think in general it is. But um, some of that stuff still exists. Sure. Some, some some products are better than others. So I'd look for those things. Um, you know, I try to understand what 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 other tools is the is the company providing, like like our portals, right? Mm-hmm. Can I track a claim? That's a big deal to, to a customer. They need to know what's happening with their repair. Right. And in some you know some situations they don't get to know that. But understand those things. What you know? What are the benefits that they offer? What other things like rapid repair guarantee or rental truck? We've got a program called the Comfort Package, which is it covers a lot of stuff that traditional uh, warranties don't, like the HVAC and the radiator and the radio and things you know, things that you'd normally see more on a a new truck warranty. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to you know add those that, that package as well. That's an optional package that you that you can you can buy as well. So look for all those things as well. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing to me the. Um, the attachment rate in, in in our industry, and I, you know, I came out of sort of the car insurance world and worked for GMAC for a while, and 
um, you, you see a much higher attachment rate of our kind of product in, in that space than we do here. It's, it's getting better in mm-hmm. the truck space, but a lot of it is just, um, it's just not presented. So customers should ask for it. I, I, I want a warranty on this truck. And then I want to know who you're who you're offering, how long have they been in business, how much business have you done with them, that sort of thing. Um, ask about financing options, for instance. Usually, when a customer is buying a, a warranty, when they're buying a truck, the the warranty is financed with the with the, the truck price, and that's that's what happens most of the time. That, that's mm-hmm. that, that's great. Um, there are financing options in situations where where that doesn't happen that mm-hmm. we can provide as well. So don't don't let you know if, if the lender on the truck says nope, I'm not going to do it. Don't, don't stop at that point. They're asked about options to get it financed as well. Plenty to think about there on the used truck warranty front, no doubt. And there's plenty more with first-hand experiences of owner-operators like Kenyette Godhigh Bell. There's a picture of her and her Cascadia on this podcast edition's cover image. Eduardo Sesteda, too, like Godhigh Bell with a premium 2000 warranty that has worked out for him, as it has for both of them to varying degrees. Several other providers, from Truckmaster to True North Global to engine OEMs like Cummins and their Encore program, warranting engine rebuilds and more, you'll find two in that full three-part series authored by our own Matt Cole. Part one in the series is titled, Given Sky High Repair Costs, Used Trunk Warranties More Valuable Than Ever. Find it at overdriveonline.com. And here's a big thanks to Wade Bontrager, small fleet owner Bud Davenport, also pictured on the cover image for this podcast, and our old Matt Cole for all the work put into this one. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter and overdrive contributor Lowell Hall Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis, the snake man himself, Womack, Terry Two Socks Richardson on bass, keys by Tishamingo, Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Mr. Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor, Matt Cole, who you heard from today, of course. Social Media Coordinator Holly Young, Executive Editor Alex Lockett.